This is June 2014, question seven, a coordinate question. When you were using coordinates, you always start at this point here, the origin, okay? You always then, your first, the first number tells you if you're going across. If it's positive, you go to the right. If it's negative, you go to the left. And then your second coordinate tells you whether you're going up or down. This one here says A is at minus four. So you're going across to minus four. And then because it's a plus 2, you're going up 2. And you mark it on your axis at the cook where it meets. And always write letter A next to it, so you know which one is which. The next coordinate, B. Again, you start at 0. The first number is minus 1, so you go across to minus 1. The second number is minus 5. So now we go down because it's a negative. So we go down to minus 5, which is down here, and we mark it at B. C is a plus 4 and a plus 3. So we start at 0, we go across plus 4, up plus 3, mark it, and put a C. Next one. Question 8. Complete an accurate draw in a triangle XYZ in which YZ is 10 centimetres, X angle XYZ is 62, and XZY is 47. When you're looking at these, what that... That little hat above the angle tells you that angle Y is 62 and angle Z is 47. And what, is, what it says is I've got to draw the point X so that from X to Y to Z makes 62. So from here it's going to be 62 degrees. That means, if you remember, a right angle would be 90 degrees. So it's going to be before your right angle. What you need to do with these is because I'm measuring angle Y because the hat is above the Y at 62 degrees. I put my center of the protractor on the angle Y, which we're going from. Zero comes across. And if you look in there, zero is on the inside lane. Inside lane, inside line even. So you're going from the inside line and we're going around until 62 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So 60 is on 120, but because I need 62, I've got to go across another one, another two, and then I mark it. And that tells me point X could be any, anywhere on this line. And what I'm going to do, I'm not just going to go up as far as that 62. I'm going to go all the way up to the end, okay? Because it could, depending where Z is, it's where it crosses. It's important with this question that you use a pencil because if you make a mistake you can rub it out if i made a mistake here i wouldn't be able to rub it out the next one here is telling me from angle x to z to y is 47 degrees okay so x to z to y what i'm going to do now is measure angle z and it's going to come in at 47 degrees so i'm putting my protractor point on Z now, and I'm making sure a note is lined up with a line. So I'm putting the protractor point on Z, lining note up, and I'm going around to 47 degrees. So this time, zero is on the outside numbers, not the inside. I know 90 is a right angle, so I know it's going to be over here somewhere. So making sure it's lined up and going around 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 46, 47. So I'm marking at 47, which is just 3 before 50, or 2 past 45 on the scale. And now, same, I lift up my protractor, and I need to join Z up to the point where it crosses. And where it crosses there is point X. And that is how you draw a scale drawing. Part B, in terms of special names, you should remember... Less than 90 is an acute angle. So an acute is less than 90 degrees. An obtuse is bigger than 90, but less than 180. So the answer to this one is called an obtuse angle. And the other angle you need to know in terms of acute and obtuse is a reflex, which is greater than 180. Greater than 180. So it's more than half a turn. So a reflex is greater than 180 degrees. So obtuse is between 90 and 180, and acute is less than 90. So in this terms, an acute, uh, obtuse is more than 90, but less than 180 degrees. Right, question number nine. 
This <laughs> one you have a rectangular tank, all right, which is in the shape of a cuboid. So to find the volume of a cuboid, it's length times width times height. But you need to be careful. The height of the tank is 10 centimeters, but it tells us it's only half full. All right. So because it's only half full, half of 10 is 5. So when I'm working out the volume of a cuboid, it's length times width times height. So my length is 20, my width is 15, and my height is 5. So I'm doing 20 times 15 times 5. So I'd start with the 20 times 15. The way I would do that, I would do 15 times 10. So 15 times 10, when you multiply by 10, and it's a whole number, you can add a zero. And now, so to get 15 times 20, because 20 is double 10, I'm going to double that. So the first bit becomes 300. Now I'm doing 300 times 5. So when I'm doing 300 times 5, I'm doing three fives of 15, and then I add the two zeros. And that comes in as centimetres cubed. So the volume of that tank is 1,500 or 1,500 centimetres cubed. Right, a centimetre cubed is the same as one millilitre. So if I add a tiny one centimetre cubed, that is equal to one millilitre. So this 1,500 centimetres cubed is the same as 1,500 millilitres. To change it to litres now, because the question asks for litres, you should realise from your drink containers, all right, most of your bottles of water I can see in front of me are around 500 millilitres. There's 1,000 millilitres in one litre. So because there's 1,000 millilitres in a litre, I need to divide that by 1,000. So 1,000 would be one litre, 2,000 would be two litres. So because 1,500 is in the middle of 1,000 and 2,000, when you divide by 1,000, the answer to that becomes 1.5 litres. Right, last question, question 10. Right, this is a question that's commonly done wrong, especially the part B. The table shows typical ranges of fares and journey times for London taxis. All right, any distance up to one mile takes between six and 13 minutes, and they've got three different tariffs. This one is on a Monday to Friday in the daytime between 6 a.m. and 20 hundred hours. Because 12 p.m. is lunchtime, that means that one there, because 20 take away 12 is 8, that means 8 p.m. if you were changing it to a 12-hour clock. So Monday to Friday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. is in tariff 2. 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. is also tariff 2 for a Saturday to Sunday. And this one is every night from 10 p.m. at night to 6 a.m. So a journey of five, it gives you an example. So I always refer to this, a journey of five miles. So five miles is between four and six. So it's going to be in this, this row here, up to six miles would cost between 28 and 32, depending on the time of the journey, all right, at midnight, because midnight is in that section, so it means, depending on the length of the journey, it means it's going to be in that section here, 28 to 32 pound. If it was between, like, if it was like 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning, it would be in this tariff, so it would be 28 to 31. So let's answer the question now. Use a table to answer the following questions. Peter hires a taxi on the Thursday, so a Thursday at 10.25 a.m. for a journey of two miles. So up to two miles would be in this section. Thursday in the morning. So this is Thursday in the morning. Okay, so it's going to be, it tells you, okay, the time it's going to take and the cost of the tariff because Thursday in the morning and there. So what the question is saying is what is the least amount he's charged? He could be charged between £8.40 and £13.40. So the least amount charged is £8.40. And the earliest time he would get there. So because the quickest the taxi could be is 10 minutes, he leaves at 10.25. If I added 10 minutes on, 5 minutes would be 10.30. So 10 minutes would be 10.35 a.m. Right, part B. Joanna and her four friends are out together on a Friday at 11.30 p.m. So it's a very late one. So if you remember, Friday at 11.30 p.m. is going to be 
in this section here. So we're looking at tariff three. I know straight away he's going to be using tariff three. They are staying in the hotel, which is three and a half miles away. So going back to this section here, it could be the distance is going to be is an up to the four mile section. So if they get in a taxi, it's going to be in that section here, in the blue section here. They could hire a taxi and could buy tickets on the underground tube costing £4 each. So if they buy in, first of all, going on the underground, the underground, there's Joanna and her four friends. So there's five of them going. So for the underground, it's going to cost five times four, which is £20. Okay. How much for the taxi now? Right. First of all, you've got to ask yourself is, does it clearly say about, doesn't say about number of people in a taxi, so, all right, you can assume it's tariff free, up to three and a half miles, you can assume London taxis are five seaters, if it doesn't say any otherwise, and it, you haven't got to worry about the taxi holding four people. So in this section, tariff three is going to be between £17 and £27 for that taxi. So what you're looking at now is a taxi, the cheapest taxi, if I do the cheapest first, the cheapest taxi is £17, which would save three, would save Joanna and her friends £3 on the journey. Okay, so that's what we explain. Is it possible that hiding taxi might save money? So the cheapest taxi, which is 17, would pound save three pounds on the journey. But the most expensive taxi was 27 pounds. So the most expensive taxi, all right, so the, the dearest taxi is going to be 27 pounds, which would be seven pounds more expensive. So we show in both our possibilities there. Okay, so you can either get the cheapest taxi, which would be £3 cheaper, or the dearest taxi, which would be £7 more expensive. To be honest, if I was you booking that, I would go by taxi, because it's going to be quicker in the taxi than getting to an underground station and so on. Plus, if it's only, even if it was the most expensive taxi, it would only be £7 more. Between five of them, that would be about £1.40 each. So, you know, but it doesn't ask you about this consideration in there. They're just asking, if, would you save money or would it cost money? So that answer is fine.